I once heard Ian Stewart say that an expert is someone who comes from somewhere else and has slides. <laughs> I do not have slides. Uh, however, <laughs> I've been a system scientist for about 25 years now, and I became aware of the Open University Group very early on. So I'm very pleased to be here uh, this evening to support this event and to say something about the context of systems thinking in practice. Um, about that context, well, I think it's challenging, but I think ultimately it's very positive, and that's what I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about. I think the, challenge, the context is challenging, well, for a number of reasons. The one that's on my mind at the moment is that we live in an era of globalized rankings of universities. So I hear a groan. Now, thinking of the, uh, the history of systems thinkers, our first reaction to this is that they reduce variety. So Ashby, amongst other people, would not be happy with this. And I think globalized rankings of universities limit innovation, uh, and they limit novel work. They particularly hinder interdisciplinary work, or thinking of system science, I guess, transdisciplinary work. It's all just rampant managerialism, of course, um, for people who want the security of imagined objective standards. Uh, but I think it is something of a problem for system science and for other areas. But I think it's one that system science can face up to, uh, which brings me to the very positive aspects of the context. And a couple of those come to mind. Let me be bold now and say it seems to me that the Cartesian, the atomistic era, really is drawing to a close. Intellectually, not practically, but intellectually. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that people know about systems. They know about holism. And I think this dawned on, on me the first time when I started working in the National Health Service and discovered very quickly indeed that running around the hospital talking to doctors and nurses and bed managers and saying, goodness, are you aware that you're living in a complex, interconnected system? Doesn't get you very far. They know that. <laughs> that I was young. They, they, they know that. You know, they're clever people. They've also you know, been trained in physiology, so it's you know, not surprising that they, they have this insight. But it's true of other professions also, and it's getting true of people everywhere. And in fact, to some extent, climate change has, has helped with that. But really, the insight, it's all connected, doesn't get you very far. Having got the insight, what do you do with it? You need vehicles, you need tools, you need methodologies to bring that insight to life, uh, to operate practically in a world of profound connectivity. And system science provides those vehicles. They move us from, uh, well, pack a checkland, from systems thinking to systems practice. So, score one for system science. Second aspect of the context that I think is positive is actually impact, which strangely enough takes us back to rankings. REF impact is a game that I think we as system scientists can play. Um, now, in that context, I was asked to say something about my work. Uh, and I will do that, but just briefly and strictly in a spirit of this is what I've been doing, but it's just a sample of the sort of practical work that system scientists do all over the world. I've done a couple of interesting projects in the last couple of years concerning policy. For the National Audit Office, I was working on some system dynamics based simulation models of hospital infections. Uh, and people at the NAO were amazed at how a model synthesized complex information um, and the model actually became a social learning system for the NAO as they used it to ask what if questions about policies for combating diseases. What worked and moreover why did they work, creating a shared understanding amongst them. The second project I've been involved in until very recently is the Munro Review of Child Protection. And for this we use causal loop diagrams. You know about those of course. Simple, vivid, compelling. They work very well with a range of people in the area of child protection. We use them essentially to manage change. We use them to explain how child protection has got into the bad state that it is in, which briefly is uh, too much prescription, not enough space for professional judgment. University vice chancellors take note. We also use them to explain why we thought the suggestions for new policies would work. So, our increasingly non-Cartesian world is looking for vehicles and it's looking for impact. I should say impact, of course, combined with scholarly reflection, yes, yes. But impact is increasingly valued and we can do that. 
System science has the vehicles that move us from systems thinking to systems practice to what we're here this evening to talk about systems thinking in practice. I've tried to touch on each of the four books that I was prepared for. Uh, I'm not going to say any more because I know that Ray is about to talk about that next. But I have two of them and I've enjoyed them thoroughly. It's good to see the Open University making more important contributions to the theory and practice of system science. So I'm very pleased to kick off this evening and help celebrate that. Thank you very much.